Hey guys and welcome to yet another video and in this video we shall be adding a custom domain name to our REST gateway. So uh, we would be using the last uh, demo that we have published that is like uh, using the Docker based .NET 5 based Docker image and then deploying a lambda out of it and uh, then we integrated the REST gateway with it. So in this video, in this lab, what we are going to do is we are going to extend the lab that we have done uh, in the last video uh, where we have deployed a Lambda from a container image uh, that was based out of .NET 5 and uh, we would be further extending it and adding a custom domain name. We shall also be adding the SSL based certificate to our uh, custom domain name from Amazon Certificate Manager and that would be totally free uh, since we are using the AWS issued certificate. So by the end of this video, uh, the expectation is you would have a complete understanding on different aspects, how to validate uh, your domain, how to add a new domain firstly, and then how to add those certificates and use those. And there are a few other steps that are required, like for example, uh, updating your DNS records and others. So we shall be covering all those aspects uh, in this video. So uh, there is not much of a code used in this video, but again, uh, everything uh, that we are referring is available on GitHub. The link is in the description. You can refer those, you can use those. And again, I'll request you not to skip any of the sections. This, these are like very important aspects from your production standpoint, from your actual practical hands-on. So uh, just don't miss anything. And just a quick word before we actually start, if you are coming here for the first time, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. There are amazing videos coming in just after this. So let's begin. Alright, so in this video what we are going to do is add a custom domain name to a REST API gateway. So uh, what we already have, uh, if you have seen the previous video, uh, we already created a web api uh, on .NET core 5 uh, that is basically a rest api and then we created a dotter image uh, which is pushed to a ecr repository and then we have a lambda that uses that particular uh, tad uh, image dotter image and uh, on the top of that we have a rest api gateway that uh, uses the http based trigger to execute the lambda now, uh, if you have not seen this video, uh, the link is in the description and in the top info bar, you can click that and have a quick look. Now, there are two problems uh, using that. Uh, if we go into the stages uh, to get the URL, uh, the first problem that you see is the URL or the host name that is generated. So uh, this is a sort of a randomized name. So this W9TH uh, something something something. So every time you create a new API, uh, this will change. And uh, this cannot be used and the base domain is again uh, on the top of AmazonAWS.com. So this cannot be used practically uh, in many cases. And the other thing is uh, if there are new stages, for example, let's say if I create a new uh, stage called dev and let's say if I use for some deployment so what will happen over here is like there will be two different endpoints for this for dev and production and this is probably something that you don't want on your APIs in production uh, this can uh, the ideal way of separating these uh, different stages is like using a different domain name the base host name for example uh, ads hyphen dev or ads hyphen prod or prod dot let's do coding dot com something like that so uh, not as a part of a url uh, as in like uh, the request path uh, but as a part of host name so that's the ideal way so uh, custom domain names uh, provide a standardized way of using the domain name for example let's say if i just open uh, the current domain names that i have and if you see over here I have a, a domain name called go.letsdocoding.com. Now this is backed by another lambda that I already have and that is basically doing the redirection part. Now this particular API is if we see over here, uh, it will ha also have a different name, uh, different host name, uh, which is pretty difficult or at least not easier to remember. And if you want to, let's say forward the name. So uh, we get a very simplified user or a human friendly name uh, growing by this approach. All right, so we already have this API, locations API that is already working. And now we need to add a custom domain name on top of it. So how can we do that? Let's quickly add that. 
So uh, the first thing is, of course, cre click create over here. So now we need to add a domain name over here and uh, I'll just use a very simple name. All right. So uh, once this is done, uh, basically we have to select the endpoint type and either we can use a edge optimized uh, endpoint, which would be like on the top of cloud front or we can use a regional one. The regional ones are specific to a particular uh, area or a region. So uh, let's keep the defaults right now without changing anything else, uh, including the TLS or other areas, we'll just move with the regional one. Now, the next thing that we need to have before we proceed forward is we need to have a certificate. Uh, I already have a certificate, a wildcard certificate uh, for my base domain. Uh, but uh, to simplify and explain the process, uh, let's create a new certificate. So once we click that, uh, we need to go over there and click on request a certificate. Now there are two ways of getting SSL certificates uh, in AWS. Either we can create a private CA and uh, we can get the certificates from there. Uh, now this is a very expensive affair and in general if your sites are like uh, public facing, uh, it is not ideally preferred unless you are a big corporate. So anyways, uh, the other way or a more simplified way is to uh, get the certificate from AWS. And that is pretty easy. Uh, just click over here, request certificate. And again, we are going to get the certificate from a public CA or a public certification authority. Click request certificate. It will ask for a domain name. Uh, we will pass in the same uh, as we have put in earlier. Uh, we can also add multiple names uh, to a certificate. Uh, we don't have a need right now. Uh, just press next. Now, uh, when we are issuing a certificate, uh, we need to validate the domain and by validation, it means like whether we are owning the particular domain or not. So uh, the certificates are issued only once you validate your domain. Uh, there are two ways of validation. One is uh, DNS based validation where you need to add test records or TST records uh, in your DNS management. And the other way is like the email validation. So uh, I'll go with the email validation over here for this example and I press next. I don't need to have any tags at least for now and quickly summarize, see everything is good and fine and press the confirm and request. All right. So uh, what it will do, uh, if you see over here, uh, it will give you a list of email IDs uh, where it will be sending an approval request. Each of these ID will get a uh, email. Uh, which contains a link and you need to click on that link uh, before uh, like it is being uh, approved, the certificate is approved. So let me quickly open the email and show you like how the certificate looks like. So if you see over here, you will get a email similar something like this and you need to click on the link that is provided. And this will open a page where you need to click on I approve. It will have the domain name, your account number and other details. Uh, just click on I approve. Now, once you do that, uh, it will give you a confirmation that the certificate has been approved and it will take a while uh, before uh, the certificate is actually being issued. So uh, we need to request for a few moments and if you say like it still says pending validations although I have clicked the approval it will take okay now if you see over here it says the certificate has been issued so all the details you can validate and see over here uh, so once this is validated uh, now uh, we need to go over there and this newly created certificate will not show in the list so we can just simply refresh the page and once the page is refreshed, uh, we'll again put in the domain name and regional, all the basic details and we will select our new certificate. Now, once that is done, just click create domain name. Now, uh, we have the domain name added to our custom domain names and uh, now the next step we need to do is to create the mappings. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we need to like map this domain name to the AWS. So this is basically a DNS step. And what we need to do is we need to uh, add a CNAME record uh, for uh, this particular domain name. Uh, and the value that we need to use is given over here. So if you see API gateway domain name, so we can just uh, copy this value 
and I'll quickly add that to my registrar. So uh, this step can change uh, depending upon where your domain is registered. And what I'll ask you is to check like how you can update that in your uh, DNS registrar. So basically what you need to do is you need to go into the DNS manager uh, for your uh, uh, where your domain is registered and add a new CNAME record uh, with this value and it should point to this particular uh, gateway domain. So I'll quickly show uh, whether it has been updated or not. I'll do a NS lookup over here and uh, I'll set the type to CNAME and let me just copy this value from here. And if you see a uh, canonical name has been added and this is the target domain name. Now uh, let me just try to hit this API first and see like if it is working and I'll pass in city slash states. It should give me a list of states. Yes, this is working fine. So once we are done with the configuration part, that is all good and fine. Uh, now go to API management, uh, configure API mappings and we need to add a new mapping over here. So I'll select my locations API, uh, which is the source API where I want to point and within the stages, as you see, we have both the stages, the production and the dev. So I'll select the production here uh, for now and uh, path is something optional. So if you want to, let's say uh, slash API, we have a common path. If we want to include that, uh, that can also be done uh, right now. Let's just leave it as it is and we press the save. Now it's the test time. Uh, let's quickly try to see uh, how this works out. Okay. So if you see uh, this is uh, missing authentication token and if I just pass in API slash states, it should give me a list of states. So if you see uh, all this ugly URL uh, along with the stage name. So this part has been changed or substituted with my custom domain name, which is specific to my site or my portal. And uh, we just have the API states. And the other thing uh, to be noted is the certificate. So if you go over here and click on certificate and you will see uh, the certificate is issued to this particular domain name by Amazon. And this has a validity of one year. And if you go back over here, uh, so once the certificate is in use, it is automatically renewed as well. So this renewal eligibility becomes eligible. So with this, we added the custom domain. So that's pretty much for this video. And what we have achieved so far is like we have a .NET 5 based Docker image. We deployed a container out of it. Then we added a REST gateway. And uh, in this video, we added a custom domain with a SSL certificate to it. For all the previous videos, the links are available in the description. You can check those. And uh, after this, so guys, we will be extending this series and we shall try to build uh, some of the actual real time production applications uh, based on these concepts. So you need uh, to understand these basic concepts before we actually move on to the uh, more production and real time uh, applications. So we shall be covering those and uh, in case you have not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And in case you have any of the queries, suggestions, questions or whatever, just use the comments box and let us know. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, as much as possible. And lastly, if you like the video, uh, press the thumbs up button. Do let us know. Uh, guys, that motivates us a lot to keep continuing these videos. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.